while wandering the countryside in search of something worthy against which to prove your mettle, you come across the small town called Barrowbur. There's not much more to the town than an inn, market, and homes for the townsfolk, and what you do see strikes you as being somewhat barren and dilapidated. There are far fewer people out and about than you would expect, and those you do see seem eager to finish their errands and be gone. As you wander the town, you end up picking up word that the mayor has been trying to assemble a team to send to investigate the old mansion that stands in the midst of the forest to the north. Your interest piqued, you make your way to the mayor's house to inquire. The mayor, Divad Kerbis, explains that over the past few months there have been a great deal of disappearances in and around the woods and needs help investigating and putting a stop to it. He thinks that a group of brigands has moved into the old Mont Arthas Manor and are robbing and killing folks in the area. Townsfolk have been spreading rumors about the grounds being possessed by a great evil, but Mayor Kerbis takes no stock in these rumors. Two weeks ago, he sent two of his best men to investigate the grounds, but they never came back. Surely, it must be brigands. He insists on sending no fewer than four people, and offers to pay five gold pieces each on departure for the manor, and twenty gold each upon a return with a report. Montarthas Manor itself is about nine miles north and will take about four hours to reach. Mayor Kerbis says he's been sending those who've taken the job down to the inn where he's covering their stay while the rest of the team forms. He asks that you head out as soon as the team is assembled. Once the final member of the party has been found, they head down to the inn along with Mayor Kerbis. The mayor calls the party into a meeting room where he introduces everyone. He realizes that one of those he'd hired, Raquel the Half-Elf, is not in attendance. He mutters something about how that strange woman better not have run off with my gold, or worse, gotten herself killed by brigands, but hurriedly gives the rest of you directions to Mont Arthur's Manor and sends you on your way. You spend the next two hours traveling with your newfound cohorts towards the manor. All right. Well, uh, thanks for uh, joining me with this, guys. Uh, I, I ask your your patience because, you know, first time doing this, I will embarrass myself, embarrass all of you, uh, and end up having to uh, ask Sean for direction, no doubt. But that's why we're here. Yeah, so that all said, um, let's uh, get things going here. So uh, so you guys have been uh, walking through the dark woods for several hours on your way from Barrowbur, um, heading towards uh, Mont Arthas Manor. The journey has been largely unremarkable, and there have been no sightings, brigands, or any other dangers along the way. The only thing you've noticed is that as you've gotten closer to your destination, the air seems a little heavier the night growing a little darker than it should be at this point in the evening. As you make your way through, you finally come to a clearing where you find, sitting upon a fallen log, a woman scribbling in a notebook. And go. Um, what does this woman look like? Oh! Hi! You guys must. Are, are you guys the other people from the village? The mayor's yeah. with you. Does she look like a half elf? <laughs> she look. She looks very much like a half elf. Perhaps she could describe herself to you. Since she uh, can never... <laughs> true. Um, I'm just sitting, sitting on the road, carelessly in the dust. Uh, I'm. Uh, Got like long blonde hair. I don't know, green eyes, slender, tall, pointed, you know, slightly pointed ears. Uh, pretty obviously half elf. Uh, also, very obviously, 
into what I am doing in my notebook a little more than greeting you guys. And uh, so from this place in the clearing, you can see just up the road, probably about uh, 60, 70 yards away, is uh, Mont Arthur's Manor. Um, uh, just at, through the clearing, uh, just past where um, where she is sitting. Well, I'll walk over to her and kind of bend down and take a peek at what she's drawing. A bad sketch of the house. Because I, I can't draw. Outside of the house I'm or the inside of the house? Scene. Sketching the outside. Like what did, I am seeing. Did you is your character's bad, bad Yeah, is it your character's bad drawing or your bad drawing? Like <laughs> My personal bad drawing. My character does a better job. Okay. All right. Hello, must be Raquel. Yes. Yes, I am Raquel. I, I, I was told other people would be joining, uh, but I, I just I wanted to make sure I could document what things looked like before anyone else told me I needed to hurry along. So why didn't you end up meeting us at the inn? Because I wanted to document what the house looked like before anybody tried to rush me. Well, now that uh, we're here, we should probably move along. <laughs> <laughs> A quick out of character um, question to Nate. Mm -hmm. um, is Bill with us? And if so, can Bill describe himself or herself yeah. really yeah. quickly? Yeah. Um, my my and like like Bill, unless you want to retcon something, I would assume that you just like as we as I wrote the intro, um, that all of you except Raquel uh, traveled here together uh, over the past four hours. So if there's something that you would like that you would have uh, revealed to the party or try to discuss uh, over the past four hours, uh, now is the time. Um, or you he's can. A, he's a. Pretty tall for an elf. Uh, he's a high elf with the um, but he's got darker hair instead of blonde hair. Uh, he's got steel gray eyes. Um, you know he looks youngish, um, but uh, you've already seen him use a few cantrips, uh, prestidigitation and whatnot to do things. Um, he doesn't say a whole lot, but he seems to be pretty helpful. Um, if you've asked him any questions about uh, where he comes from. Uh, he'll tell you he's from far away. Um, he's been asked to go on a, a leave of absence and uh, learn more about the surrounding areas for his patron. What's his name? <laughs> he does have a name. <laughs> Zagor, yeah, Zagwar Eptum. I'm sorry, Zagwar? Very close, Zagwar. Like a jaguar? Zagwar. Very much, yeah, very much like a jaguar. Zygwar. Alright. With the Z. Zygwar. He dresses mostly in black. Um, he doesn't wear armor, but he has a, a rapier on one side and an empty holster on the other side. Right. Any questions of him other than that? I probably would have asked him at some point why his culture is empty. To which he replies, it's not. Not really. That's where the shadow is. In times of need, we'll see. But otherwise it stays right there. Alright. Okay, then I think um, as we sort of complete the, like, as uh, largest character who is Garrick says that about the, like, we should hurry along, which I don't know if you meant that to be hilariously in character, but I think so based on your character's previous comments. <laughs> um. <laughs> just uh, just because I haven't been filled in on the back story, can I at least get character names, Sean? Oh. Yes. Uh, my character's name is Jasper. 
I'll just give a quick okay. thing. He's uh, he's in his late forties, bald on top of his head, uh, long white hair that goes about down to his collar, with a uh, white mustache that kind of goes down into white chops that come up to meet his hair, and he's uh, the mutton chops, the white mutton chops. Okay. Uh, he's about five ten and slender, and his name is Jasper. Uh, Bill, if you would like to avoid having to write all this down, I do have a Google Doc started that's got all this in it. Um, if you Beautiful. send me an email address to send to you, I will give you the invite. And then everyone can have group notes. Oh, cool. All right. I will get to that. Yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, just for the time being, though, Tammy, what's your character's name? My character's name is Badger. Badger is a Minotaur. Badger does not talk much, but Badger does have a very, very large great axe. And uh, Badger's fur color is brown, if that matters. Thus far, no one has inquired, to my knowledge, of anything else from Badger, and Badger does not offer any additional information. Um, I'm pretty sure my character would come up and, because you seem to be one of the heftier of the group, not to pry, but... Uh... What line of work are you in? Badger slowly looks down at the great X and then looks back at you and then just sort of is like, I kill things. For pay, for pleasure, or for personnel who employ you? Yes. I believe I have an understanding. Thank you. Uh, Lars? Uh, my character is Garrick. He's like 30 ish, dark hair, uh, dark armor, carries a crossbow and a rapier. Um. Ziguar is, is most uh, interested in your rapier and says, where did you get that crafted on? Uh, I was, uh, he doesn't actually use the rapier, so now I'm trying to think about it. Fair enough. I caught you off guard. <laughs> uh, it's actually nothing special. I'm sorry, uh, real quick. Hey, Jill. Can yeah. you come let Tychus out, please? Oh, fuck, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that you locked us in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, otherwise the door's going to open. Yeah, no, I I can block it from in here. <laughs> I like this theory. Locking a DM in the closet until <laughs> we get what we want. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, Phil, this is a good time oh. to give me your email address, actually. Uh, <laughs> no, apparently it is not. <laughs> <laughs> and if the Google Docs works out for people, we can do that during our normal session as well, depending upon how much people feel like referencing notes. Notes are helpful. That's a cool idea. That would ha it would have drastically cut down on the number of Tammy's drunken notes that make no sense. But those are fun. That's, how we, get, that's how we get anger water and, was it, Sergeant Macaroni? No, those happen with whether you want them or not. Sorry, I did not anticipate the, uh, the amount I would be able to hear Nate talking from the office. That's all right. And uh, have been unable to locate headphones, so... All right, then, I, I uh, thought you were about to say you were unable to locate your cat, and I was alarmed. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad you found the cat. No, no, we found the cat. I got the cat out of the room, and in the process of doing that, three went in. So um, <laughs> the door okay. is now propped shut as opposed to locked shut because our cats are assholes. 
Yeah, as soon as, like, if I notice everybody goes out, then I'll close it, close it. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Anyway, no, that's okay. So, uh, Jasper will point at the uh, creepy house that we can now see. So, what does everybody know about that? Apparently, it's full of brigands. Yes, I did hear the uh, mayor talk about brigands, but I am not so sure that that's the actual cause. I too have heard that it may involve some type of curse. <sighs> really? Okay, well, here's what I know about this area. Long time ago, generations ago, there was a city here. And this house, this house was the center of that city. Uh, it was where the where the general of the Barfort Milita is the city of Barford Barfort. They were here. They were constantly being attacked by orcs. And they withheld for centuries. Over time the city fell apart. The orcs ended up somehow destroying this city. There have been no generals of Bartfort, no more Bartfort ever since. And it obviously people don't even remember the name of the city anymore. But that's where this house comes from. This house is freaking cool, guys. I don't know any about any of this curse crap. That seems silly. I guess we'll see. Shall we go forth? I would suggest that our, uh, our large friend leads the way, if you don't mind. And he looks at Badger and kind of nods forward. Badger nods just a little, like like the ears flick back and the tail flicks a little, but there's not a lot of like emoting going on. So even if you were familiar with Minotaurs, it would seem that this one really doesn't want to share with the group. Um, and Badger leads the way without looking to make sure everyone else is doing fine. Like just so, assuming that everyone's gonna follow. So just because, I'm sorry, I might do this a lot since the first time we play. I want to do an inside check on Badger to see if it bothered Badger that I asked her to lead. Uh, okay, I'm going to give my answer to Nate, and then Nate can use your role to determine whether or not, how much you know from that. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. Assuming I can be less of an idiot and click on the right thing. I got a 25. We'll allow it. A 45? That's, that's 25. all right. You might, yeah. 25. Sorry, I had to do my first official skill check. Mm -hmm. Yay! You, you seem like... Badger seems to be getting off an air of satisfaction yeah. that uh, that perhaps you've recognized something in them that they knew was there. <laughs> All, right. All right, then I will just turn and follow Badger. All right. Are the rest of you coming along, or is there anything else you want to do before uh, approaching the house further? Uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'll, I'll kind of shuffle along in the back, still flipping to a new page and starting to take some new notes. I'll uh, take my crossbow out and cast uh, Crimson Rite on it. You'll cast what on it? Crimson right. Crimson right. Okay, I, I just curious. What is that? Because it sounds quite militant and dangerous. <laughs> um, so it's a. It's a. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just. It's like kind of a spell. Um, it makes my crossbow glow, and it adds a little bit of damage to it. Oh, so your crossbow like starts glowing. 
Nice. Sheds a bright light to a radius of 20 feet. Oh, damn. Oh, that's the Crimson Rite, Rite of the Dawn. Yep. Cool. All right. Flashlight crossbow. Nice, nice. <laughs> and I rolled a two for, I don't know if you cared, Nate, but I rolled a two for the damage roll and a three for the damage to me roll. Okay. Yep. Just um, as long as you're tracking your hit points and remind me if uh, that when that damage roll comes into play. Uh, assuming it does, and I'm going to... Let's see. So you emit 20 feet of bright light. Yep. Wow. That is fucking... Nice. That is nice and bright. How did I yeah. miss that? <laughs> um, You're not supposed to admit when you miss things, DM. Pro tip. Right. You're like, ah, oh, yes. Yes, because I've never admitted missing things before. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. <laughs> oh. All right. No fallibility. All right. So neat trick you I got just, there. So just getting my screens set up. All right, and hopefully this works and doesn't show you anything you shouldn't see. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. oh my god, it's porn. I'm not supposed to see that. Wow, it's really. I guess now's a good time as any. Zygwar uh, touches his forehead and his heart and casts uh, um, mage armor on himself. That is taking a little bit. Hold on, let me. Yeah, try refreshing probably. Uh, Bill, I put a link in the chat if you want to. Access I did see the... it. Yes, thank okay. you. There we go. Okay, I'm here, and I should be able to center. There you go. All right. Jasmine, you have 20 minutes. Go away. There we go. All right. Ah. So, got Badger up front, Raquel towards the back, and then you chumps wherever, unless you tell me you, you want to be somewhere. All right. So, as you uh, approach the mansion, you notice that the blackness of the stone is unnatural and almost tainted. The air grows thick, and what little light the night gives somehow becomes duller and duller the closer you get to the evil dwelling. Well, this isn't creepy at all, is it? Hmm. Somewhat fascinating, actually. Shall we have a closer look? Hmm. Might as well. Thanks. Houses are creepy. Interesting. Interesting. So how far up do you guys want to go? I'm just going to keep going until someone behind him like noticeably, visibly, or like audibly stops. All right. Can I just take a look at the outside of the house and see if I notice anything? Like, I get the general creepy vibe, but if I notice anything that would make me stop? I will take along on that venture. Sure. Uh... Give me a perception. Do you want to do that with assistance, Sean, or should I roll my own? My perception is plus six. Yeah, I guess, I mean, if you really want to. I'm going to <laughs> and I rolled two 13s, so that's 18. Um, you don't notice anything uh, other than the fact that the, uh, the black, like, as, as mentioned, the, uh, the blackness of the stone is really quite... Uh, more, uh, it seems very unnatural. All right. Then yeah, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't stop Badger. I'd let Badger keep walking towards the front door. All right. Well, uh, so as you get up here, um, you stand in near darkness. Before you are a set of steps that lead to the high archways that govern the entryway into the mansion proper. A large set of oak double doors sit patiently closed, awaiting your advance. You notice small crystal blue eyes peering at you from behind a dark window beside the doorway. Nate, could I already have um, summoned my familiar and have it with me so that I could do the snap thing and it's on my shoulder or whatever? Sure. You, I think you would probably would have done that. So I do a snap, and there is a, uh, oh my god, I can't even remember what it's called! So Alabama. the light, the light no, bulb no, shaped no. swimming pool, is that the courtyard you were talking about? No, no. no. That is a, uh, 
that, that is a raised um, enclosed area you can't like it, from inside it seems like you know there might be a there might be a body of water in there but from where you're at you can't really make out anything more than that okay for anyone who cares to notice there's now a uh, a bat on Zagor's yeah. shoulder it's a uh, a white wolf bat one of the, a rare white bat that's basically just got black ears and black claws and occasionally some black markings on the wings but other than that it's white um, are those blue eyes just staying in the window or did they like look at us and then leave uh, they, they, they peered at you but as soon as you uh, started to pay attention to them they're gone all right did all of us notice those eyes like unless much... you were unless you were pretty absorbed with doing something else like if you were regarding the front of the house at all as you approached it you would have noticed them. Okay. so someone perhaps making note of their teammates being afraid of houses might have missed it <laughs> or no I, I'm, I'm very much watching everything around me as well Fair so, I, like, so Jasper just kind of looks over his shoulder so everybody saw those right I Creep, creepy eyes in the window I would call yes. them blue eyes uh, in the window, but yes, I, I did see some blue eyes. Well, I would say uh, glowing eyes in a supposedly haunted house might give off a slightly creepy vibe to uh, some people. Some. Um... That's just my estimation. But I just want to make sure that I wasn't the only one that noticed uh, eyes appearing and disappearing. Very good. Badger. Badger, if you don't mind, the door, please. Uh, I'm sorry, Garrick, were you going to say something? Uh, when when Garrick saw the eyes, did he have noticed anything about them? Like, when, when mm. they look, like anything? No. Nope, nothing, nothing that would have uh, sparked anything. All right, then Badger will stride forward and grip the door and attempt to open it using normal methods? Alright. Give me a strength check. Oh, I would love to. I... Da, 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 do not naturally get advantage on strength checks. So... Oh, come on. That was a one. That's sad. That is not a good start for poor. Did you just roll a one? Did you... I did. Yep, I rolled a one. So that's the... a five. That's a five. That's five. The door does not budge even at all like i would like to do that again immediately as immediately as possible with like some no small amount of embarrassment <laughs> all right give me another strength check Mother. all right well that's a nine the uh you, you you continue pulling on the door you're like exerting a you know like a fair bit of strength but uh the, the door does not budge all right, Jasper it pipes up. It doesn't even rattle. Jasper Perhaps pipes it up. Be... Could, it, could it be locked? Perhaps push instead of pull. <laughs> okay, so Badger now has slightly more affinity and uh, niceness towards Jasper and slightly less towards Zagwar. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Tammy with like all of our names and like plus and minus numbers like going down <laughs> as the adventure goes on. <laughs> I may have swapped to a tab you can't see. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think it's been long enough that if somebody wanted to try something else, Badger couldn't try a third time without it being obvious that they're just trying. Uh, well, ja Jasper will come up around the side. May I? <laughs> Badger nods and like walks slightly away. Okay. So then I'm just gonna like turning the knob or just to check and see if it's locked and the the doorknob doesn't move at all um it does it it um or rather it's um it's not a knob it's a handle oh, okay but um but the uh the door doesn't jostle at all there's no visible lock oh like no visible locking mechanism from from uh so no keyhole or anything like that mm -hmm. oh well i'll look at it i'll see there's no keyhole and i'll just kind of turn around and put up my hands well there's no keyhole, so my idea won't work. Anybody else have any uh, thoughts on how we can get this uh, thing open? Perhaps we should I... just go to the back. 
Badger hefts the great axe, like, without saying anything, like, I'll get us in this door. Uh, I, I calmly walk up to the door and uh, touch Push it. On it. I've seen identify. Kitty sent me out. Nate, will you take that moment? I'm going to go feed the cats. I'll be back in 35 seconds. All right. I will <laughs> wait to say things until you're back. All right. Welcome back, Sean. Um, Sorry. So that's all good. So uh, Raquel uh, touches the door, uh, casts identify on it. Um, you immediately get the sense that, like, you know, you're, 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 all, you're almost repulsed by, uh, by touching the door. It is clearly uh, under the influence of some sort of evil supernatural spell. Uh, but the uh, but beyond that, you you couldn't really say. Okay, I, I relay. It's, uh, I it is rec recoil and tell you guys, like this this is what's going on at the door. Badger says nothing but looks privately relieved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we head around the house. Hmm. Oh, maybe I should be giving a little more cadence to the uh, possibility of this house being cursed, or at least under heavy magic. So, so have you ever experienced anything that repulsed you in that manner before? I. Like, do you I know what it could be? No, it could be any number of things. Just bad magic. It. Well, perhaps I've come across a right. number of things in my studies and travels. But I guess I could roll for it, Nate. Um, uh, give me an Arcana check. I don't really know. I would also like to assist in that. Uh, let's see. Well, I rolled seven. Sorry, are you doing that with advantage since, uh, oh, I rolled as well. Uh, since Ziggy Stardust is helping you? <laughs> Close. This is Ziggy Stardust. Close guess. Nice. Not bad. <laughs> I did not roll with advantage. Oh, yeah, no, I want that seven, though. Um, I rolled a 16 plus seven. six. Yeah, I'd be, I'd have an eleven. Yeah. So okay. Um, so taking the, uh, the twenty-two, um, so you notice that there is definitely an eerie essence that surrounds the door. It's almost as if the doors themselves do not wish to be opened. I pass that on to Raquel. Hmm. Hmm. No, it is. It's in a door's nature to be opened. So I, this, this is a puzzle. Should we? Uh... Badger, Badger once again brandishes the great axe. Like, should we uh, follow Garrick's advice and do a quick look around the house before we uh, allow Badger to use his uh, fine weapon? Yeah. Yes, I, I would prefer not to do damage to a building that has survived this long. And I, I, I cannot repair a broken door. Not that broken. And I'm sorry, out of character. Is Badger a male or a female? Badger is a they. <laughs> Badger is a they? Checked? Okay. I, okay. Badger, Badger finds it very amusing whenever people attempt to gender them. Okay. Just so I can use gender neutral pronouns when I'm addressing Badger. Alright. Uh... Well, or you could go back and forth. Like a continuum. Yeah. It, Badger's not going to be offended either way. It literally is just hilarious to them that people will assume one gender over the other just for whatever reason. Well, uh, Badger, would you like to uh, lead us around the house? <laughs> Badger. <laughs> I don't know why you made that face. It made it extra funny. The around the house. Around the house? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Badger nods and then goes north. 
right. Um, so, as you turn from the door, you hear a loud creak from behind you. You look back only to see that the doors have opened on their own accord. Uh, uh, those those on looking crystal blue eyes, absolutely gone. The looming black space behind the entryway stares menacing at you, menacingly at you, inviting you into its abode. Badger ignores it and continues walking north. <laughs> if it was a good idea before, it's a good idea now. Badger! Badger! Hold on a second. Badger stops. Uh, just, Jasper just kind of looks around at the group. Do we go in the creepy self-opening door, or do we continue to look around? Well, I figure I will find most information on the inside of the house, so I say we go in. I agree. Y'all gonna head inside? Yeah, Badger's definitely not gonna continue walking. Like, if people are wanting to go inside, Badger's gonna go inside. Alright. You're invited. It's your funeral. I'm gonna survive, Cadger yeah. Fields. If y'all die, whatever. <laughs> Alright. Um so the entryway to this room has a large open space with a floor of black marble. On either side of the room, two imposing looking demonic statues stand as if motionlessly keeping watch over the empty room. Hmm. May I perform an arcana check on it? them. Uh, I'll help him. Sure. Give me that check. Uh, 18 plus 6. Alright. Um, there is definitely something off about the about the statues. Can't quite put your finger on it. But there is something suspect about them. Uh, I would like to do a history check on the statues as I am sketching them. All right. Give me your history check. Uh, 12 plus 18. Mm -hmm. um, they're very detailed statues, but as far as the history of them, there's nothing about them that um, would identify them to a certain region or time period they're just monstrous demonic looking statues all right does uh zygor and garrick uh relay the something off but not sure what to the rest of the group uh yeah it would okay then I would like to go up like as close as I can without actually touching the statues and just knowing that there's something off about them, just seeing if I can see anything like if they're a trap or if there's just something that I can see that would let me know to be wary of them. Mm -hmm. how, uh, how, uh, how close are you, uh, are you talking about getting? I, I want to say Badger's going to follow pretty closely behind without getting in the way, but um, of the people here, Jasper is currently Badger's favorite, and so... <laughs> Of, of the people who, that uh, Badger wants to survive, Jasper's at the top of the list. Nice, I've got a Minotaur body here. No. Um, we'll do about we'll do about ten feet away. Like I just want to I want to okay. look at it just to see if it's something okay. that I should be afraid of. Um, so are you thinking like here, here? Um, go down. This is the south one. Here. Yeah, I'll go right there. Okay, and I'll look at the nearest one. Um. Yeah, I mean like a. Uh, Give me a, an investigation check. Or I get... No, it would be perception, wouldn't it? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Sorry. Uh, 16. Yep. No, uh, very simple. Like, nothing noticeable. Nothing uh, outstanding about it other than it is a very detailed statue that looks like some sort of demon. All right. Jasper uh, strokes his mutton chops time and just goes hmm odd and then just turns around uh, sh shall we the motions towards the stairs further into the manor all right yep. um, 
All right. As you take your first step in between the two statues, they uh, they suddenly come to life. Uh, they are. Uh, doop, doop. Let's get them. Uh, sorry, dude. Uh, they are starfish. <laughs> it's Patrick. Uh, the horror. It's Patrick. The horror. Oh my. <laughs> All right. That should do it. Okay, Can you so the, yeah. just a bit more. Like I, I, I can't see the detail in it. It seems as though yep, you put some into it. Yeah, you should uh, be in it at least a hundred percent. Oh, there we go. They're uh, Mewtwo's. All right. Uh, so they come to life. Uh, look at you, snarl. And I'm going to need you to roll for initiative. Oh, <laughs> oh balls! Oh. Thank you, Nate. You said the I word. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Give me a second. Apparently, uh, the turn order was still populated from when we were testing before. Oh, okay. That means our rolls don't count, then, right? All right, uh, Badger, what do you got? 20. Jasper. 22. Ziggyar. 22. Eric. 6. <laughs> and Raquel. 16. Right. Uh, just a new moment here. Oh, wow, okay. All right, uh, Ziggyar, it is your turn. Um, he pulls and casts Shadow Blade from the empty sheath, pulling the sh- literally pulling the shadow out as it forms into a beautiful rapier, and then pulls the rapier from the other side and uh, step towards the one to the south, um, south of the one to the west. And we'll attack from there. All right. And uh, is that just your... Uh... Oh, where's that? So it's part of your spell stuff. Mm-hmm. Is it... Where's your attack coming from? Actually, I just cast Shadow Blade. So it's going to be Shadow Blade. And then my offhand will be uh, with my uh, uh, two-handed weapon uh, style. Or uh, two-weapon fighting style. I will... Uh, attack with the second one. So it's first it's the shadow. Oh, I I don't have any uh I don't see any weapons in here for you. You have well, okay, number 1. The first attack is coming from the spell, which is literally the shadow blade. Uh-huh. Go to spells. There it is. All right, so that is Psychic. Sorry, yours is the only one that I didn't have time to like really go over in detail. It's my fault. I didn't give you much oh. time to play with it. It is quite all right. Um, That's sorry. Just trying to figure out what it's a what it saves or what it's up against. It's just. Oh, this was the part that I knew it was going to be hard for me. Let's figure no out that shit. Oh. Yeah. Are, you talking, are you looking for the type yeah. of weapon? Or? Well, yeah, just try, I'm trying to figure out what... Uh... Okay, well... Oh, yeah, hey, it deals, uh, it deals psychic damage. Uh-huh. 
So just go to the AC. Never mind. All right. So, uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, give me your. Uh, give me your. Uh, what's your roll for the first? Not good. Uh, five and seven is twelve. Uh, so you uh, you go in to hit with your shadow dagger, but the, uh, the gargoyle pretty easily just steps to the side, uh, so you miss with the uh, the first attack. And the second attack was just with the plane right here. Thirteen and seven is twenty. That is a hit. Uh, the roll for damage, please. D8 is five. Eight and five is thirteen. All right, so uh, you come in with the rapier and uh, end up catching the gargoyle right under the ribs uh, and get a pretty uh, pretty big hit in there. Uh, just like slices into its stony flesh. Uh, I'm sorry, you said that was 15, 12, 11, 10? Uh, 13. 13, thank you. Um, so I can math. Oh, God, I can math so good. Um, if you... Uh... On the in the green like where the HP is of the creature, yeah. if you mm-hmm. click in that and then just do minus whatever and hit enter, it'll automatically deduct it. Oh, that's cool. So you don't have to math. Nice. So well, here let me. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to test that really quick. <laughs> Something that we should have tested the other day. Yep. Yeah. If you do minus or plus or whatever, cool. you should just oh, add, so add awesome. and subtract. Right. It. it took um, me like sorry. three years to figure that out. So for that. <laughs> All uh, right, cool. Um, all right, um, is there anything else that you, uh, you would like to do then? I must retract. Uh, it only takes eight points. I forgot two-handed weapon fighting style. You don't get to do the extra damage um, from my dexterity, so it only actually took eight. Okay. I'm actually oh. actually two weapon fighting style does give you the modifier. If you don't have two weapon fighting style, you 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 don't get the modifier, but. Two, two weapon fighting style is what actually does give you that modifier. Does it say that as a feat? Uh, you don't. I'm just trying to find it. I have the feat too. Oh, never weapon. mind. Never mind. I misspoke. I'm thinking of the fighters. Uh, that's like that a battle sense. type. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Apologize. That's fine. Yeah, that's like I'm sitting here, like yeah, that's right, that's right. But that's. But no, fine. it's it's a it's a it's a combat. It's a fighter combat style that Sanishi has. So that's my map. So okay, it's just so a straight damage roll. Anything else then uh, for uh, Ziggyar? Nope. Alright. Uh, Jasper, you are next. I am going to move um, to the north side of the west creature, directly opposite of Zygor. Alright. There you go. And I will attack the creature. Ziggar? Ziguar. Much like Jaguar, oh, like Jaguar, but with a Z-I instead of a J. Ziguar. Ziguar. All right. So then, are you doing flanking? Yeah. Turn All right. Up. In that case, I will attack with advantage. That is a 14 plus 4. 18. That hits. Yes. All right. Then... I get 1d4 plus 2, and then my sneak attack damage. So, 1d4 plus 2, that's a 4, so that's 6. Oh, and as he, as um, Jasper walks towards it, he reaches behind him and actually pulls out a billy club, as opposed to like a dagger, and that's what he hits it with. So he does 6, and then I'll roll the 2d6 for the sneak attack. Which is another five, so that's eleven damage. That is really nice flavor text for someone who used to be an investigator, by the way. Exactly. He has a billy club. We use a dagger. So, um, so you come in with uh, the billy club and just like you're behind the gargoyle and just deliver a uh, a crushing blow uh, to the back of its knee, uh, and it like takes the hit, like drops a bit, uh, like you know, like covers a bit, but it's um, it's yeah, clearly uh, feeling the, the the weight of the blows that has received so far. All right, I am going to use my bonus action to disengage. All right, and then I'm going to go um, 
uh, one to uh, basically to the uh, the southeast of where Badger is. Okay. There you go. And as I kind of walk, as I kind of move back past Badger, I'm gonna take my uh, my Billy Club and just kind of go like this with it, like, little head nod, and I'm gonna walk back and go, like, intentionally like I'm okay. I'm getting out of the way now, yeah, and then I'm done. All right. All right, Badger, you're up. All right, I have a question for you, DM. I have an answer. So if I travel 20 feet before I attack a thing. I can use uh, my goring rush. Mm -hmm. I'm not 20 feet from this thing. Can I like do a weird like <laughs> loopy run at it in order to acquire 20 feet? Back up and start checking, checking, checking. Check. Yeah. Well, like, well, like, what's your what's your movement? Uh, I mean, uh, I would I would so five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So I'd like basically go down one and then like swoop past my Billy Cub Club buddy and then like up to the one to the north. Yeah, no, like that 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 works for me. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, you're, yeah, you're just like you're backing up to get a running start. Yeah, I'll allow it. Okay, so that means uh, I'm gonna do that, and then I'm going to do a, an attack with my uh, great axe. Not loving the way this dice is busy. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, sixteen. No, uh, seventeen. Excuse me. All right, that hits. All right, then I need D12 plus four. D12, you are not. You are 12. I don't think I have any, any other extras because I'm not raging right now, so. Four, eight. Eight damage? Yep. All right. Anything else? Yes, as my bonus attack, I will use Goring Rush. Oh my. Oh my, we're all so surprised. Um, I can make one melee attack with my horns as a bonus action. So my horns attack is plus six to hit. Let's see if it lands. 14. That does not hit. That does not hit. I do not hit. Yeah, so I get you like, you go into like Gord again, but like this time it just staggers out of the way resets itself. Uh, is there anything else for your turn, friend? Uh, no, that is it. All right. So uh, next up is going to be... Uh, which one are you? Um, if you... This one. Oh, okay. Um, I just did... I don't have the nameplates showing. No, like, I can you... see the names. If I'm you sorry? on the on the turn order... If uh -huh. you either hover over it or click it, it should oh, highlight which one yeah. it is. There it is, hovering. Up. That did it, too. Cool. All right. So, thank you. Uh, so, this one is going to uh, attack. Is going to uh, first um, attempt to bite our, our friend uh, Ziggy R here. So that is 14. No. Nope. All right. Uh, then it's going to... So, so it goes to bite at you, but you deftly, you know, knock its jaws out of the way. But then it uh, comes at you with a second attack of 16. No. All right. Wow. Bats that one away. As, uh, so it comes at you with a claw. You just, again, just like dancing away from the, uh, the claws and the bites of this hideous gargoyle creature. Um, so I guess at, at that point it will... Uh, That'll, that'll be its turn. And we'll move on to the other one, who will uh, similarly uh, attempt to attack um, Badger. Uh, that is better. Uh, 22. Yeah, that, that I, you know, I'm just barely, barely hits. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so then that's... All right, so you are going to take uh, five damage as the, uh, the the gargoyle's jaws wrap around your arm, um, tearing at your flesh a bit. Um, it'll then uh, come at you with a... Uh, like, bringing its claw in for a second attack. It uh, 
it it, it goes to, to strike you with its claw, but it ends up uh, scratching itself in the face a little bit, <laughs> which shocks it into letting go of your arm. Um, it kind of like it's like what? But it's like, it's like when you, you're eating pizza and you bite the inside of your cheek. You know, it's real. Yeah. It's real bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's awful. And now the gargoyle knows how we feel. Uh, <laughs> um, but all right, that's going to be it for uh, for that gargoyle's turn. Uh, Raquel, you are up next. Uh, I am going to use sixty feet. I think staying where I am we're pretty close I'm going to uh, unleash some vicious mockery on these guys that's that's cruel <laughs> vicious almost it, it is uh, let's can see. I just say that I missed you guys <laughs> <laughs> yes. alright um, so it needs to succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Um, All right, I'm gonna go refill my drink, but I still have my headphones on, so I'll be able to hear. Okay, cool. Uh, that's a single target, yeah. Yes. Uh, right. it range 50 feet duration. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. So, which which one are you targeting then? Uh, I'm going to target. Jesus. So we have a mine core at one, and this one target exists. We can't possibly take him down. Well, I mean, he might let us take him down. He's very forgiving. He rises from the dead, though. This has been recorded. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it at the one that's been taking the most damage. All right. So this one here. All right. So it needs to succeed a wisdom saving throw. Oh. Um, which is four. Needs to be fourteen. Needs to fourteen. Yeah. <clears throat> we have a three-day head start, though. All right. It uh, <clears throat> see it succeeds in uh, its saving throw. Um. Okay. So it. <clears throat> so it. it uh, you know, it, it resists your uh, your vicious mockery, um, and from what I can see, nothing happens if it resists. No, yeah, it's yeah. it's either uh, it's either a, it works or it doesn't. Okay, yeah, you need it, better um, jokes. Yeah, it it just like it just kind of looks at you, smirks, shakes it, its head, and looks back towards uh, uh, Ziggy R. Um, can I do spells as can, or cantrips as bonus actions as well? I or... don't believe so. Only if the casting time of the cantrip is a bonus action. Okay. Okay. Uh, in that case, I am done. Because you can do a you can do a leveled spell mm -hmm. and a cantrip as a bonus action oh. as long as the cantrip's casting time is a bonus action. Yeah, and, and all of yours are either a minute or one action. Yeah. Right. Because you could like you right. you could do a cantrip as your as your action, and then there are some leveled spells that you can cast as bonus actions. Like, you could do some combination in that, but they have to be specifically called out as casting time bonus action. Okay, okay. And yeah, cool. it doesn't look like you have anything that... I do not. Alright. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, anything else for you, then? Nope, just... Damn you messing up all those decorations on yourself, and it failed. <laughs> All right, uh, Garrick, it is your turn. Um, All right, I'll fire my crossbow at the one of the north, and I'll use my sharpshooter feet to take a negative five on the attack. Uh, Twenty. That hits with a negative five. Damn. Five plus eight on the. Um, the plus eight and then minus the five, so I still get a plus three. Oh well. Um, so it'd be nine piercing and then two radiant. 
and then an extra ten piercing. So, how much is that total? Uh, I, I, your, some of the numbers were a little muffled. Oh, sorry. Uh, it would be twenty-one all together. Twenty-one total. And it was up like two radiant, you said. Yep, two of its radiant. And then, any chance the statues are undead? Uh, they they are not. Okay. And then I'll use my bonus action to uh, fire on it again. I'll do the same thing. All right. Uh, that's not so good. Uh, ten. That does not hit. So yeah, your your first volley just like takes a like hits it right in the side and just takes out a huge chunk of it. Uh, but the second one goes whizzing by uh, through the hole that you made uh, in the first one. So dealing while an impressive shot deals no damage. It does, however, improve Badger's personal like standing for you. So you're like now number one. <laughs> just so you know. you really need like a, a Badger app. <laughs> Where we all rank yep. at the moment. I, I like real, this. like real time. Yeah. Watch us move. <laughs> if you ever want to know, let me know. Because right now it's Garrick, and then Jasper, and then uh, Jaguar, Jaguar, <laughs> and then uh, Raquel. Raquel, you're down at the bottom until you can prove that you can follow rules. The fact that you chose not to meet us in the inn for no apparent reason did not endear you to uh, my friend. See, no, well, if, for a reason. I was being nice. If Badger was in our actual campaign, we would need like a twi- like a Twitch gadget <laughs> that was like a real time Badger friend level. Like, I need that for this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Badger and Sanishi? Oh God, I don't want to. Well, um, honestly, <laughs> like as long as Sanishi was following rules, which Sanishi actually does, I think Badger would like Sanishi. Oh yeah, no, I think they'd get along great. I agree. I think they'd yeah. get along splendidly. They'd be fast friends. <laughs> it would be problematic for everyone else. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, uh, Garrick, is there anything else that you would like to do with your turn, sir? Uh, no, I'm done. All right. We are back round to Ziggyar. Continue the onslaught. Ziggyar. Or not. Uh. 13. That is not a hit. Okay. And the real rapier, a 17. All right. That does hit. This shadow ship just doesn't work. <laughs> you're, you're, you're attacking it with an imaginary oh. sword. Badger is mentally thinking, why did you think that would work? <laughs> no, it's very real. Uh, that that was a very uh, real substance. A four? Yeah, four damage. Yes. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You catch it like you know, like it, it blocks with its arm. So while being stony, it you know it, it, it does manage to stop it. But you know it, it winces a bit at the as it as it slices into its stony flesh. Uh, all right, anything uh, else you will do with your turn, sir? Nope. It seems content to stay here in front of me and not um, risk anyone else. Keep it here. Keep its attention. Jasper. All right, Jasper will move back to the north of the same creature and attack it, flanking again. All right. Lay it on me. Not good and worse. Perfect. Um, Tell me what they are. <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, that that does nothing. You know, you like go in there, you know, Billy Club is swinging, but it, it's. It saw you coming back in and was ready for you. Um, so, no, no go on that 12. Um, you know what? Let's, yeah, let's get stupid. Um, after that, after that <laughs> one misses, uh, Jasper's going to use his free action and pull out his other Billy Club and take a swing with that one. All right. Other Billies. I do have, I have the, uh, I have the two weapon fighting. So mm-hmm. I don't get the the bonus on it, but I'm not left-handed. I still get advantage. <laughs> ah, that's another twelve. So that was garbage. Anyways. All right, cool. Well, yeah. Gargoyle is just kind of like 
checks over its shoulder at you. You know, just like sees that you're just over there doing kind of your own thing. So just makes a mental note. <laughs> Beyond that, doesn't really regard you much. Zygor <laughs> like like noticed like really close and has like a little arched eyebrow of intrigue. <laughs> and, and Jasper, after the misses the two, he just looks at him and goes, fucking bush. Agreed. He does seem right. dodgy. Oh. 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 All, right. All right. Anything else with your turn? No, I'm done. All right. Badger, you're up. All right, Badger's gonna be using fake dice for the rest of this run. We'll just right. see how it rolls, but oh, I'm using fake dice. Use D&D Beyond oh, dice. Nice. Yes, we are. This is gonna go terribly. It's gonna be fabulous. So um, I cannot run away and do my like 20 feet loop without getting uh, yeah. an attack of opportunity, so I'm not going to do that, but I am going to attack again with my great axe. All right. That's a, what? Oh, 18 total, yeah, All right. okay. All right, that hits. Hot nice. diggity dang, all right, boom. Eight, oh, uh, 12, 12 ouches. What? Did you just give your. No, the, the, sorry, the, the digital dice rolled an eight, and then I saw oh. the plus four for the 12. Ah. Eight ouches? 12 ouches. 12 ouches. 12 ouches, sorry. Eight unmodified ouches. 12 modified ouches. All right. So far, so... this is going well for me. So, so the, uh, you know, you, you catch the gargoyle in the uh, the shoulder with this one. It, you know, rocks it a bit, but doesn't quite, you know, cleave, you know, as deeply into it as uh, as you would hope. It's still mobile. It's still got use of the arm, but it's clearly shaken by the blow. So, given our positions, I'm going to guess the answer is no, but because I've never asked this before, I'm going to ask it now. Uh, my hammering horns will allow me to push a target away from me potentially, but I feel like there's nowhere away for it to go. Is it useless in this particular situation? I mean, I'm curious to see what Sean would think, but I would think that you could feasibly push it to the side. I mean, that's, I mean, it's still technically away. So yeah, I mean, it's it's totally your call. I, I would probably say sure. But yeah, okay. I, can, I can. If you were to say no, I could totally understand your reasoning behind it. Yeah, no, I, moving I, it sideways and not away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, hammering horns as my um, bonus action. It can move up to ten feet away from me, but I, I just don't think that's feasible given our terrain right now. Uh, but you must succeed on a strength saving throw DC fourteen. Okay. Let me see here. And let's say I push it farther into the corner, because I don't know, corners are good. Um, it does not. You know, it it, oh. it actually like you complete. It's caught completely off guard by uh, by your horny onslaught. Um, <laughs> and and uh, and it is, is uh, knocked knocked firmly into the corner. I, I love that I have not only created my horniest character, but also my first asexual character, and <laughs> that those are the same thing. It pleases me greatly. <laughs> it clearly did nothing, except it made Badger feel better. Okay, that's what this was all about. <sighs> that, that Badger's strong. Me. Badger's strong. Friends see Badger strong. This is where <laughs> we are right now. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, anything else, friend Badger? No, that's that's plenty. That's good. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Gargoyle down here between you two friends um, is going to um, is going to you know it, it takes a look uh, or it takes another look at uh, Ziguar and snarls and goes in uh, to to bite again. Um, that's a uh, twenty three. I will cast. Uh, Shield. Cat, more like cast jerk thing. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> All right. So shield. A second here. It just adds five, so that'll make okay. a miss. Okay. All right. Well, then it, it like it comes at you, and then all it just like it's, you know, fangs bump up against this magic shield, and it blinks. And turns around, 
and it's gonna uh, swing a claw at uh, at Jasper. Uh, for what is that? A seventeen. Seventeen hits. Seventeen hits. All right. You are going to take thirteen AC. <laughs> uh, four piercing damage. All right. Badger exhales roughly upon seeing its friend. Oofta. Yeah. Um. Uh, so it's it's going to uh, so the gargoyle is then going to uh, warily move a little further into the room, but then uh, uh, come to rest there and go on to next gargoyle's turn. Uh, who looks like rather stunned still from being like thrown into the corner. <laughs> Uh, and, and then uh, somebody puts baby in the corner. Yeah, uh, like so, it, like it lashes out at Badger with its claws. Your horny onslaught took it off guard. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that is um, eighteen to hit. Oh, unfortunately, that one also hits, but just barely. All right. Well, um, oof. <laughs> uh, seven damage, or I'm sorry, eight damage. Whoa! Hold on, I like the first one better. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so it comes in, you know, like claws, uh, claws you all the way down your arm, um, <clears throat> and as the claws just starting to reach the end of your wrist, it uh, it lunges in to uh, to bite you. Um, for fourteen to hit. Ha ha! It fails. All right. It, it, and not even just barely. It fails by a lot. <laughs> it gnashes its terrible <laughs> teeth at you, but you get your arm out of the way in time, uh, shaking a hoof at it. <laughs> um, so then the um, gargoyle is kind of like trying to shimmy between you and the wall. Um, actually, the, he's he's going to shimmy. Shimmy down into uh, into Garrick's face. How um, dare! And then that will be that'll be its turn. Raquel, you're up. Uh, I am going to cast Fairy Fire. Um, everybody is within. Do, do, do. 20 foot cube. Okay. So 10. I guess it's kind of between. Between the guys? It's 20 foot cube? Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. How do I ping that shape? Um, The way I always did it was I just used like a torch as an icon mm -hmm. and gave it a 20 foot aura and moved uh, it okay. around. Um. Um, actually, if you go to the right, um, if you look up the icons, oh, I didn't, I don't know if I loaded them in, in, in this roll 20 or not. I have, uh, spell, like, templates. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I haven't seen them while, uh, right. playing with it. Any, well, anyway, it's, um... You, you do this, do this, and uh, no, it's, I it's will cool have them, like, I will have them moved over to the campaign by the time the next turn comes around. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, like, you can... It's a, uh, is it a 10 foot radius? Yeah, it's a 10 foot radius. So yeah, you can hit these guys. If you just put your, your cast point in between them, you can hit it no, uh, no problem. Okay. Um, yeah, and if I could, I want, because I would like to move it back far enough to get, capture anything in the other room it might pick up, as well as these two. Okay. Um, so back so, towards the stairs a little. Yeah, so, um, Okay. Um, so any creature in the area needs to uh, is outlined in light if it fails a dexterity saving throw. Um, and then any attack roll against affected creature has advantage if you can see it. All right. So let's see, dexterity saving throw. And it needs to be 14. 
All right. Uh, it lands easily on both of them. Uh, so they are now illuminated. Um, and uh, and any attacks against them will have advantage. Assuming you can see them. All right. Nice. I, I'm done. All right. Garrick, you're up. Uh, so the last time, I'll get my crossbow hit the one that's in my face. Okay. And your specialness makes it so you don't get badness because it's in your face, right? Yep. Cool. Those, those are very technical so, words. Okay. I hope you guys yeah, can keep up. Specialness and badness are now officially part of the lexicon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, first one, 11. Okay, that, that misses. And then I'll use my bonus attack for the other one. Uh, 16 for the other one. That hits. Uh, 20 damage. All right. Um, so with that, you like you know. So your first one, you ain't you're aiming right for this. It's <clears throat> like a <clears throat> sorry uh, for its head. You pull it back. You know, you fire or you, you or you fire your crossbow because it's not like this. It's like this. Um, <laughs> but it just dodges out of the way. Uh, you quickly like almost you know unseeably fast. You reload the second one. Aim just a little bit lower and fire it off. It hits it right at the uh, the top of its chest and just blows a hole in it. Its head goes flying, uh, and it is uh, it, it is very dead. Hey. Oh, wow. Nice. And that'll be my point. Alright. Uh, Ziggyar. I give a little nod to uh, Badger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't want to like interrupt the group, but like literally, you just shot way like you were already at the top, but now you're like way at the top of Badger's like favorite people list. <laughs> Badger's now covered in blood, which is Badger's favorite state to be in. <laughs> <laughs> but most of it is Badger's. Look, okay. semantics. All right, this is why you're blood not at the blood. top of the list. All right, that's all I'm saying, Zach. You are. <laughs> All right, Zaguar, you're up. Zaguar will move uh, ten spaces or ten feet to the east to take advantage of uh, flanking and attack as normal. Okay. And you do have advantage on this attack. Shadow blade first. <laughs> Extra advantage. One and a twelve. Extra oh. advantage. Extra advantage. Okay, let's let's do the extra advantage. <laughs> uh, Twelve and seven is nineteen. That hits. Yay! Damn it! Now I actually have to look at the spell again. It's two D eight, right? Just two D eight, or is there something else? Two yeah, two D. <laughs> it's a two D eight. Thank you. He said toot. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> Holy shit. Two eights. Oh, there's no pluses. So 16. Is it okay. still standing? Uh, yes, it is still standing. Then I will take his offhand attack. <laughs> a one and a four, which will both miss. Alright. So, uh, so, so yeah, it takes a. It's, you know. Actually, it's shocked that uh, the, the first blade actually hits it, and it hurts <laughs> quite a bit. It's like, whoa, where did this thing come from? So it is like, <laughs> knocked down, almost falls down, ba barely able to get back up. Uh, but it's 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 back up and still looking ferocious, uh, you know, like a like a wounded animal. Um, Point of interest. Um, not that it matters now, but is this room considered dim light? I just noticed that, um, and I would say that the room itself is, but uh, you've got um, oh, that's right, Garrick exuding twenty feet of yeah, uh, bright light. Oh, that's right. It's all good. That that will uh, conclude my turn. 
All right, Jasper. All right, you are Jasper's up. gonna uh, take a swing with the build pub with advantage. That would be sixteen. That hits. <laughs> Then 1d4 for the Billy Club, and then he gets sneak attacks, so 3, so 5, 9, 14 damage. Alright, uh, with that, your your Billy Club comes down on, uh, on the side of its neck, and it just like crumples and falls down to the ground. Uh, you, uh, are you? Uh, I know that you had initially said you were playing non-lethally. Does that can that extend to gargoyles? Uh yes. All right. Well, uh, the gargoyle then like just slumps down to the ground. It has been uh, beaten within an inch of its life. So Jasper just kind of like taps his billy club on the side of his leg and just kind of looks at everybody else. So I, uh, I have a rule that I, I don't I kill. kill. And then he turns around, like he turns away from it. But my rule doesn't extend to anybody else. This is considered an evil creature, right? Yes. I kill it. All oh, right. Would... Uh... I will. Mean, you take know, shadow blade and stab it. I could have tried to talk to that and figure out what we are looking at in this house. You would attempt to talk to a construct. Fascinating. I will attempt to talk to anything that can tell me a story. Okay. And of many constructs and hallway, you know, they have, they see things, they know what's up. Noted for future reference. Okay, so that didn't interrupt you murdering the thing. No. It sounds like she okay. said it after no. he murdered the thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 If you ever want to know your badger standings, you just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> so is is the thing did it is it like I'm gonna go I'm gonna go examine the body. Um Okay. Their body. Uh, I would like to hear the badger standings. Uh, current Badger standings are um, Garrick in the lead. Jasper did lose some points, and although Jaguar did gain some points, he didn't gain enough to quite pass Garrick just yet. <laughs> but they're now almost neck and neck, and then we still have our uh, bookish weird person in the, 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 the rear. <laughs> the distant rear. Oh yeah, no, I figure I'm probably going to stay just... You know, you, actually, you're, you're not as far behind as you used to be, to be honest. Like, Talking to people is potentially useful. Um, so, yeah, I want to go examine the body. Um, there, there is nothing. There's nothing of note with the uh, of the bodies. They're just they 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 are uh, slowly crumbling. Yeah, you know, just dead gargoyles. Zagro will go to the foot of the stairs and uh, just kind of watch. Uh, as a guard until everyone else is done playing in the room. Okay. Badger basically stands next to him. Doesn't try and like exert any sort of like I'm better than you, like I'm gonna stand in front of you kind of thing, but definitely is right next to him. Okay. Are, are the starfish just empty spots where the statues used to be? Yeah, they're, um, this map was just what was included with the um, uh, the PDF that I got, it's not overly detailed. I did add a number of assets to it to like pretty it up in some spaces, but those were spots that are just on the map to indicate where the gargoyles were. Okay. They're the pedestals that the gargoyles were standing upon. There you go. Yes, yes. So it's yes, that. Well, unfortunately, uh, I can no longer get any type of copy uh, of the, the runes and decorations that were on uh, these creatures. So, and uh, I have all the information I believe I need. Shall we move on? Certainly. Why not? Would you care to lead? Looks over to Badger. 
<laughs> For a moment, I thought you were asking Jill's character, and I thought Badger was not going to be okay with that. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, no, I, honestly, I thought you were asking me too. My my reaction is just to like look at you, wide eyed, no, mildly at large over her form, and simply says, "Would you care to lead?" <clears throat> but the fact that Jill is right next to you while you make that arm motion yeah. in no way makes it seem less like you're asking Jill to do this thing. <laughs> Just so you know. Okay. Badger definitely agrees with this assessment and continues forward. All right. Zagwar will follow. All right. So, um, so as you enter this next room, it is up on a, uh, a raised platform, just a step up from the foyer and uh, the room beyond. Uh, it is situated at the bottom of a stairwell. Uh, this stairwell is a spiral staircase. Uh, there are pathways going up and pathways going down. However, the stairs going upward are blocked by a solid iron portcullis. Um, in the southwest corner of the room, you see a, uh, a cushioned seating, uh, a cushioned seat, uh, and it has an old, worn children's doll lying on it. Um, let's see here. Um, and then finally, uh, just situated just to the south of the stairwell, is a griffin statue uh, with holding up one of its talons in a knocking type of stance. <laughs> Okay, the, the out of character urge to fist pump the griffin is so strong. Yep. <laughs> so strong. What if we take the creepy also, doll and have the creepy doll fist pump the griffin? If that I is in character, the doll is not immediately. Alright, I I will I will be stupid and I will go investigate the griffin statue. Okay. Um, okay uh give me uh uh, like how uh, how how are you, are are you investigating or are you percepting? I'll per I'll perceive because I don't want to touch it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Give me that perception check. Twenty five. All right. Um. So invest like uh taking a look. It looks like there's some sort of mechanism in the arm of the griffin that would uh, allow it to uh, either move or be removed, but there's definitely something that was intentional in the design uh, to make part of the claw shift. All right, well, I relay that to the group and so, should we shift it? Or uh, does anybody think it's dangerous? Perhaps it is dangerous. Oh, sure. but... My, my wild guess true. is it would open the portcullis. Possibly. I think maybe we should look around first. Yes, I, I'm. There's. I, I think we should hold off. There's a little in this room, like where. I, I would like to go inspect the doll. Alright. Well, I'll just kind of like turn away from it then. Hold on. I, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll a dice real quick. I'm sorry. All right, Nate, I need you to choose. Is high good or high bad? I mean, that's really relative, isn't yep, it? Yep, I know. That's why <laughs> I'm I, think, I, think, I think it's. I think it is good for Badger. Huh, no, no, I just need to know, like, morally good, morally bad. I just need oh. to know high good. Oh, oh, fuck. Um, it is bad. High is bad? High is bad. And then Badger just goes and pulls the fucking arm. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. You, you, you know <laughs> why, Nate. No one else does, but you I, no, know I, why. I, I, so, so as the arm, like you, like you pull on the arm, it comes down with a little bit of a mechanical clank. And then in the distance, um, like somewhere to the north, you hear a rumbling, like stone shifting. And that's it. Badger stands next to the griffin as though nothing just happened. Right. And, the, uh, the, like, and, and then the uh, after you uh, do you like once you release the claw, it pops back up into place with no accompanying to do. <laughs> I, I would like while this is, I would like to continue my uh, percept percepting. Okay. Uh, uh, give me a perception check, please. 
Uh, say I already rolled, I'm totally keeping that roll. 17 plus perception. 20. All right, so uh, it is a very, very old doll. Hard to tell exactly how old it is, but you'd have to guess it's um, got to be at least 100 years old. Uh, it's in surprise, like for, for as old as it is, you're surprised at how uh, it's still holding together at the seams. Um, it's got um, kind of uh, messy black hair uh, and, uh, and these just very dull, faded uh, blue eyes. Um, with just a, a, a quaint little worn white dress. But beyond that, there's nothing that you can... Nothing that strikes you about it beyond that. Nothing... Just seems like an old doll. Totally is a magic doll. Uh, can I, like, in... Do like an arcana check on it or something, like check if it's magical. Sure. Uh, eleven. There's nothing. Like you don't notice anything magical or strange about the doll. Um. Is there dust around? Um, no. There's, uh, there's not really, like, there, it's not, uh, it's not overly dusty. If this place had been abandoned for hundreds of years, you would expect it to be thick with dust, but it's, uh, it's not. Okay. It's not like it's like oh my god, so clean. It's uh, a, li a little dirtier than our house. So fresh and so clean, clean. <laughs> there's a there's a bald man behind me right now, yeah. isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're looking around. Nate, um, Zygar is just going to go to the foot of the or the top of the stairs, the other mm -hmm. side of the room, and, and not. The, that's, to the that's northwest. Not, yeah. But if we switch the characters around. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And just basically looking out again. Okay. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention, can I mention this now? Before we left the room, I would have picked up my bolts. Okay. Well, yep. Let's roll to see which ones are broken or something, or is that just arrows? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um... Do bolts have a similar kind of like? Do they break? It's all like, when I when I do it, it's just house. I do a house rule. Oh, okay. That's that's where I came up with it. Okay, no, they're they're fine. You can just so long as you you know remember to pick them up, you'll you'll, you'll you're, they'll be fine. Yeah, there's no there's no written. You have a certain percentage chance of recovering. Okay, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm gonna go start like sketch out the doll a little bit. I'm gonna go sketch out the gargoyle a little. Mm. Um, Jasper's gonna walk up to Raquel and say, "So are you gonna take that with you, or are you going to leave it there?" What? What? The the, the doll. The doll. Are you going to uh, take it with you, or are you just going to sketch it and leave it where it lies? I'm not part of the doll's story. It has its own story to tell, right where it is. Are you, uh, are you done drawing it? Yeah, yes, I, I think I'm, I think I'm just about done with everything in this room. All right, Jasper is going to pick up the doll and examine it. Okay, uh, give me an investigation check. Thirteen. Um... Yeah, just uh, again, looks like a, a normal doll, uh, like nothing, like the very worn old eyes, uh, the hair, um, you know, like, you know, patchy in places, but, uh, you know, but, you know, black doll's hair, white gown. Uh, you can see, um, 
with some of the stitching, the doll has been repaired before, but uh, you couldn't really say how long it's been since that, you know, since anything was done with this doll. Okay. Uh, Jasper's gonna kind of wave the doll at Garrett and say, creepy doll, creepy house, could be useful, and then put it in his pocket. All right. Can't hurt to take it. We'll see about that. <laughs> bonus badger points for keeping the creepy doll. Okay, we really need a badger ticker. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> we really do. I, need, I need a way to make this real. Um, All right. Okay, um, so it's uh, just about nine o'clock. Uh, we've been going for I think, like about an hour and a half. Um, I know our cats would like to be fed. Uh, how do you guys feel about taking like a quick uh, five minute break here? Um, Alright, so um, All right. back to you guys. I has doll uh, you have doll. The the lever has been pulled once. Well, uh, I'll uh, I'll walk up next to Ziguar and uh, do you want to lead this time? Look over to uh, Badger, if you don't mind. Badger says nothing. Makes no emotion whatsoever, but allows you to lead. Um, you, Nate, you said that the, that curving arch is portcullis off. Those stairs up are portcullis off. Yep. Uh, there are two. There, are, you can uh, go the part of this like spiral go up, spiral go down, spiral up, blocked by portcullis. So there is a spiral down. Yes, but you can there is a way to go downstairs there. And then I don't hear the music theme, just so you know. Oh no? I hear it. Is I haven't heard it for a while. The uh the DM the music on the music for the DM is louder than the music for the players for some weird reason. It's just a roll twenty quirk. Okay. Well uh it is moving to another track here, so I can hear it now. Okay. Yeah. As a doll was in the main room with the tables, right? It was on the no, couch, on if the... I remember right. Yeah, it was on the couch. Oh, okay. And I'll it is now the in my pocket. I'll go forward into the room, north and west, uh, ten feet. Take a look around. All right. Um, so, the mansion's tea room is a large, sunken room with a fireplace and hearth situated at the northwest corner. There were three small round tables for guests to sit and consume their tea and other assorted refreshments. A glass chandelier hangs on a sturdy chain from high above. Seeing nothing of real interest in here, unless the party stops, I will go to the stairs south. Yeah, I'll just continue um, to follow you. Okay. Um, as you can, uh, as you start to move through the room, all of a sudden the glass chandelier comes crashing down right on your heels. The uh, the anchor chain swinging wildly. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, here, let me. That's just just zo zoom yourself back into like a hundred percent there. All right. And then, so did that hit any of us or? Nope. Nope. It uh, it, you it narrowly missed any of you, but. Uh, but it just the chandelier fell behind you. Jasper's just gonna look at it like on the ground and go, "Huh," and then turn and follow. There you are. Interesting. I'm gonna go uh, examine the chandelier. Um, I think I'm just. Uh, uh, oh, good God! What do I want to do to it? Touch it. Touch it. Yeah, I'll, I'll investigate it. Give me an investigation check. Oh, I rolled a 20. Plus 6, 26. Wow. All right, so uh, it seems like it was a really, really nice chandelier uh, before it came crashing down to the ground and had all of the glass shatter into a million itty bitty pieces. Um, that said, there's no, uh, there's no real sign of uh, of sabotage or the links failing due to old age um, it looks like the uh, 
it, that the anchor to the ceiling had just been released. Hmm. Hmm. Or released of its own volition. Hmm. Except Raquel clearly does not believe in such things. <laughs> creepy houses aren't haunted. It's like where it looks at uh, Raquel. Houses can't be creepy, okay? That's, I think, what Raquel's real point is here. Like, yes. you might... Yeah, you have a problem. You think a house is creepy, whatever, but a house is just a house. Yeah, a house is just a house. It, I mean, assigning a house creepy is kind of creepy. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Zygor turns to Raquel. Do you need a, more, a moment more, or shall we continue? Uh, I, I think I'm good for now. This is this is. Quite interesting. Very good. Zagor turns around and continues for continues south up the stairs. All right. Uh, is everybody else uh, joining? Badger. Uh, oh, a badger would be following by the person leading pretty yeah, okay. closely. Okay. Garrick. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll be there, just yep. kind of hanging out in the rear, watching okay. everything, taking notes, doing my thing. <clears throat> All right. Let's see here. As we move right along here. Um, as you step up into the dining room from the sunken tea room, the air grows warm. Suddenly, the room comes to life as ghostly apparitions appear seated at the once empty table. A large dinner party is being held, it seems, as a roasted hog materializes, along with plates of all varieties of food. Jugs of foaming ale are being shared between ghostly companions. A large, spectral human man stands at the head of the table, saying nothing. A serious scowl and frown is cemented over his face as he overlooks his guests, who seem to be enjoying themselves. Do I recognize any of the ghostly figures? You do not. I will move further into the room. As well they... I'm allowing him to lead, but out of character, it. out of character interest that you might have noticed one. All right. So do they do they stay there while I move into the room? Like, do they... uh, as you move into the room, they uh, the party continues on, um, at, like paying you all no heat. All right, I'll move a little closer, and I want to kind of look at. I'll look at the expression of the the person at the head of the table specifically, but like everybody, just kind of get a general idea of kind of the mood everybody seems to be in. Okay. Like uh, give me a perception check. Seventeen. Um, the the party goers all seem to be in a, a state of high spirits. They seem to be uh, celebrating something. It is not. Uh, not quite a uh, like a like a. Uh, it doesn't strike you as a uh, regular event. Not just another. Oh, yeah. so something special. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. some sort of event happening that people are uh, carousing around. <clears throat> the uh, the man at the head of the table uh, just is very very stone faced, um, very very stern looking. Um, uh, not necessarily disapproving of the party but just not in an, an, not joining in the revelry right just an incredibly stern presence okay um i would like to do a history check um and just kind of to get the if i can get any idea um in a time frame or um okay you know okay. any whatever give me uh give me that history check i'll assist oh. with those those I, I would appreciate assistance. You want to want me to roll, or do you want to roll it? Uh, I would like to roll. Very good. Uh, so with advantage, yeah, my first one is not good. Not my second one. Okay, well that's not much better. Um, Fourteen. Okay. Um, the the style seems uh, of all of the uh, the partygoers seems ancient um, certainly 
nothing recent to the last century. Okay. All right, I'm going to continue to, like, circle uh, counterclockwise just around the table. Okay. Not trying to touch any of the ghosts, but... Okay, yeah, or just... any of the... Whatever they are. Mm -hmm. But just... Uh, Badger, follow them. closely, because someone's moving into a potentially dangerous area, and Badger wishes to be available. Okay. There's Is no there... other doors or uh, immediate openings for something to present themselves? Uh, you do see at the south a set of large double doors. I will uh, stand near those and just closed. let everyone else... Okay. Um, how are you... Uh, are you... Uh, how are you navigating the room to do this? Uh, just same as sure. Jasper, just kind of circling the edge, or...? Circling the edge. Okay. Uh, as I raise my crossbow and the bright light shines over, does it change anything? Do the, the yeah. apples look the same? Things uh, continue as they are. Um, there is also, also uh, so you've got the double door um, that you are now standing next to, but then directly to your east is a uh, another uh, another door. There's another door. All right, I'll make my way over to that one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to walk up to the table and uh, get just closer examination of the people and what's on the, the feast and their clothes, all that jazz. Okay. Um, all right, so are you doing another perception check? Or are you uh, This... I will do... I'll, I'll investigate. Okay. Um, as you move up towards the table to take a look at, uh, to get a closer look at the goings on, the room becomes abruptly quiet. All talking and laughter has ceased. Every ghost in the room is now facing you when the man at the head of the table rushes towards you, floating right through the hard wooden dining table. You should not be here! Leave this place! He screams as he rushes closer. Then, quick as the party had started, the room is empty, dark and cold again. The ghosts are nowhere to be seen, and there is no sign of the man who had rushed at you. Creepy house is creepy. <laughs> hmm. That was an interesting spell. I wonder... I wonder who that man was. Uh, is there... I take a look at the table on the chair that's left there. Is there anything interesting? Uh... Give me a uh, what you want to do check. Uh, uh, are, you, are you percepting or are you investigating? I guess investigating. All right, give me an investigation check. Uh, twenty-three. Uh, there is nothing of note. Uh, of this table, our chair. It, they both look ancient and as if they have not been used in decades, if not longer. And also not covered in dust? You know, magically, no. Alright, uh, Jasper is going to look at Ziguar and kind of first nod to the double doors that you're by and then nod to the door behind me and just kind of shrug my shoulders. I would say at this point, um, Badger is probably like just to the north of um, Jasper, because that's where like more of the doors appear to be. Oh, sorry, I was playing with something on, so you would be more up by there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can dance on the table. <laughs> no, I would definitely not do that. That is not something a Badger would ever do, ever. Regardless of how nice the musicians are. <laughs> uh, hopefully, Garrick will uh, climb onto the table. Okay. <laughs> will Garrick begin to dance? I wish okay. to know. <laughs> will, will Garrick be able to get back down? As long as there's no rats. That was one time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you guys... Uh... I nod to Jasper and open the double doors. All right. 
and step in immediately. All right. With Badger, a close follower. No, oh, I think you were right the first time, Nate. A little farther in. A little further in. Okay. Yep. Oh no, no, I don't want to. I don't want to close my notes. Oh, um. Man. All right. As you enter the large double doors, a large room opens before you. A large chandelier hangs from the high ceiling, and an old dance floor stretches before you. A large glass folding door opens onto an alfresco area on the east wall. Materializing from thin air, you see the man who rushed at you, ending the ghostly dinner party in the dining room. He seems younger somehow, as if this is a vision into an earlier time in his life. A beautiful woman enters from nothingness, dressed in a flowing black gown, her eyes dark and gorgeous. He holds her and looks into those eyes, and she looks back into his. We'll disappear, just the two of us, my love, the man says dreamily. Oh, General Month Arthas, but what of your wife? And we have work to do, she reminds him. Never mind her, she will cope. And your army of undead. Let us not talk of this tonight, he replies as their apparitions fade and the room is once again empty. Okay, the general's badger score is like way low. Like, <laughs> when, like wow. When this scene starts playing out, Zagawa will turn to um, Red Crown and say, You're probably going to want to see this. Come quick. Yeah, yeah skip, skip. run like, the fuck in and take as many notes as I can capture. Hmm. Well, I guess that at least answers who the man was. Anyone else want to stand under the chandelier? <laughs> Perhaps we should avoid the chandelier in this particular room. So, undead armies, huh? This house is getting more and more interesting. Yes, I, 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 I definitely agree with you there. What? What all has happened here? Well, this, the, uh, I mean, this is the Montarthus Manor, so it would make sense that General Montarthus would have been here at some point. True. Is that a fireplace to the west? It is. And he said there was a glass door to the east. Mm -hmm. I will approach the glass door. All right. Badger will uh, follow. Mm -hmm. Yep, I will too. Assuming that the scene is ended. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the scene, the scene is over, right? So I assume you're all gonna just head towards that door, and uh, right through it. Okay, look. All right. Angry the Alfresco. Water, angry water. Oh, wait, no, wrong campaign. I apologize. <laughs> or is it? Everything's combining. A large bird man swoops in from the <laughs> sky, <laughs> screaming, Kaklaw! Kaklaw! <laughs> uh, no, all right, so uh, uh, this Alfresco area is a fenced off private swimming pool area with three ruined deck chairs at the southern end of the pool. The water remaining in the pool is still and algae green. Nothing can be seen beneath its surface. Uh, oh, and there are uh, multiple skeletal remains around the closest side of the pool. Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, I will uh, shape water to part the algae. Okay. Oh, my, that's helpful. Thank you. <laughs> what? Glad to be of service. Now, does anyone else see anything here? Yeah, say uh, what? Oh, oh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I will tell you all about it. So, um, as you, uh, you separate the water, uh, you uncover a massive beast, uh, that, um, some of you might know as a or so it, it looks like it's an undead creature with a giant eye uh and several tendrils with eyes at the end of it uh with 
a maw that is filled with sharp teeth, though it is currently lying dormant, though with the, as the water passes off of it, it seems to be being, uh, being, uh, beginning to stir. Did you just describe a beholder? A zombie That's beholder. <clears throat> let the water go, let the water go, let the water go! You should put the water Gently back. put it back over. <laughs> <laughs> and hold it perfectly still. I'm All right, furiously uh, sketching as, in my book. I look over right. at Raquel. Um, Do you think he saw us? <laughs> as, as you replace the water, you see uh, like the water settles. And then just every now and again, you see a small ripple emerging from the depths. Uh, Jasper is going to whisper quietly, Perhaps we should make our way back inside. I agree. Badger holding their great axe is going to be like, can't just leave that there. But can't we? Garrick's <laughs> <laughs> got a point. Yes. You, you never leave an enemy behind you. Is Badger what? actually talking? Yes. Oh, what? God. Ah, we do have a voice. If you were to engage it, I would assist. However, perhaps we let this one lie until we have cleared the rest of the room, cleared the rest of the grounds. Badger thinks for a very long time, like an awkwardly long amount of time. <laughs> and no one else, I assume, says anything during that time frame because I'm as, giving as, you... ba as Badger's thinking about it, uh, Ziggy Wars got a point. If uh, if we the rest of the house is clear, I'll come back with you and help you kill it. I certainly agree. Just... We shouldn't leave it here for more sheriff's men or townsmen to stumble upon. But if there are lesser things to be cleared first, perhaps we'll save this foe as a final challenge? And then walk oh. inside. Oh, Nate, I want to roll another die, but I won't. I won't. Just do it. Just do it. It's, it's what she does. It's what she she they do. All right. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. All right. Okay. Uh, Nate, is high low? Or is, is high good or is high bad? Um, he said high was good. Yeah, I know. I said uh, I said high was bad before. I was bad last time. I'm I'm willing to allow this, it to be different. But this this time it's good. This time it's good. Yeah, this time it's good. Then then Badger stands down. Because I rolled a thirteen, which is higher than ten. Better thank this fucking coin. <laughs> you better. Badger would barge into the water despite not breathing it, and then, then we would be in trouble. To try and distract Badger, Jasper will uh, look at Badger and say, "Why don't you lead us on further in the other direction of the house? Let's see what else is inside." Yes, I am. I would like to return to, here. Trying to. Uh, yeah, help, yeah, no, help Badger back in the house. Absolutely succeeds because Badger is not super smart, and that was very successful. So congratulations. <laughs> I, I I do want to make sure we return. Very few people have seen a beholder and lived, and I. The operative part not of that. Only do I now have a drawing of a live one. Well, well uh, a li live is a is a relative live. term. I just out of out of character want to point out in the in the Google Doc I am keeping up the badger ratings now, and uh, Garrick and Jasper are now uh, in the lead together. They are sharing the score. Oh my God! There is badger ratings. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and uh, it would be fascinating and just oh, a real capper to this if I was able to dissect one. I have never done it before. It. I... What could we learn? Oh my goodness. Oh my it goodness. Maybe fascinating so proposal. Wait till later. I can wait. I am nothing if not patient. How heavy do you suppose it is? Well, 
Are we still we walking continue, while we're having yes, this Yes, as we continue to move. Yeah, okay, so yeah. I would say, I, I, I don't know if Badger would stop while Raquel was talking, so I think oh, we'll be I continuously wouldn't. moving. No, you've, you've convinced right. Badger. Badger needs to be in front, so Badger will now be in front. Okay, uh, how far are you going? We will go to the, guess... through the double doors, and if Badger doesn't immediately turn to the door on the uh, east, then Zygarar will point to it and say, Badger. Badger accepts this guidance. All right. Um... All right, so the uh, the door opens into a uh, a small uh, a small kitchen. It looks like it was uh, it's mostly used for um, small dish preparation. Uh, as you look around the room, you see that there is a uh, a hole in the ceiling uh, leading upwards that was uh, that used to have a uh, a dumb waiter or some sort of similar implement in it, but uh, but now there's no, uh, nothing to fill the space. The, uh, the hole to the room above uh, could probably fit a, uh, a medium-sized uh, creature uh, or person. <laughs> oh, um, man. Um, can Jasper walk in and, like, percept the hole if I hear anything? Sure. Notice anything? Yeah. Before I offer Bad something. Badger's stupid. gonna assist, but let you do the roll. Do it. Uh, 18. Oh, yeah, um, so looking at it, you, like you can, see, yeah, you can see it was just that he's used uh, to bring food up and down. You suspect that there is a larger kitchen um, up there where, uh, where more of the, uh, the larger, more grandiose pieces would be, um, would be cooked and where dishes would be done as there are no apparent sinks down here. Um, can I you hear or smell anything? There is nothing that you can hear or smell, but if you stare at it long enough for a moment, you think you could see a faint green glow in the room. But anytime you try to actually look for that glow, you can't see it. And then if I remember, just, just so I'm remembering right, the stairwell upwards had the... The portcullis. The portcullis. Okay. All right. I relay the uh, see it, don't see it, green glow. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, it seems like I could uh, crawl up there if, uh, if I had a death wish. So uh, I look at everybody. Do I have a death wish? I said, Badger hands you a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Zygor says, I certainly hope you don't have a death wish. But should you continue? Are you are you seriously considering approaching this on your own? Oh. I've been known to be able to sneak in and out of uh, some places rather quietly so I could at least get uh, get to lock. I will assist as best I can. And he reaches behind him and pulls out his little flying fox, whispers, his eyes roll back white, and lets his familiar go up the hole, fly up the hole, it's a bat, and look around. That's better than me climbing up there, I'll tell you that. All right. Um... So the, the room above is indeed a kitchen. There is a, uh, a hot plate with a fire pit below it, uh, though it has not been used for a millennia. There is a bench on the southern wall and wooden cupboards fixed above head height on all sides. Pots, pans, knives, cups, dulled and tarnished from age, hang from hooks below the cupboards. Um, along the southern wall, there's a hole in the floor uh, that was once used for a pulley-driven dumb waiter between the downstairs kitchen and this room. The hole is big enough for a medium-sized creature to fit through it. Um, and you see a small treasure chest on the hot plate on the uh, opposite on the side of the room opposite the door. Down below, Zygwar, without moving, basically says, relays this information. 
see no present danger. If you wish to climb, now might be an opportunity. Okay, I'm sorry. As soon as your eyes go white and you start talking, Jasper kind of walks up to him and starts going like this in front of his face a couple of times now, just to see if I get a reaction. How much does that bother my bat? I'm sure the bat hears the sound. I hear someone clapping or moving something or snapping perhaps. Snapping in front of me. Currently I cannot see except for through my pet's eyes and ears. So, hearing that, Badger will actually grab the hand doing the snapping <laughs> and say, don't, and then release it. Right. Um, then I guess, I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll try and climb. So I'm going to try to, uh, weasel my way in there and... Um, you're gonna need a boost. The ceiling is uh, probably about like 15. <laughs> oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I thought it was. All oh, right, I'm. I missed. No, there's. I misheard. No, no. There's. There was. There was once a place for like a pulley-driven dumb waiter, but now it's just a hole in the ceiling. Okay. So, so it's okay, like. Okay. Well, it, I'm sorry. I, I thought it was like in the wall, like in and then up, but it's just. It's just. Oh up. no. Okay. It, um, like so, you, you walk into this little. Uh, well, here, let me. Uh, Pull you into the room a little bit, so you see that little. Uh, okay, and then it's. Um, there, okay. that, that's where. Uh, yeah, so okay. it's just a little hole in the wall. All right, then I'm gonna. Uh, Badger, do you mind? Uh, Badger very happily gives you the boost. You're still holding the end of Badger's rope, by the way. One hopes, just in case I need to like yank you back down into um, safety. Then before the before that, I will actually tie the rope around my waist because I don't want to try and climb with a rope in one hand. So I will tie okay. it around my waist, take the boost, and then try and like shimmy my way up. Okay, uh, one second here. <laughs> we didn't go the way we were supposed to go. Have, have we hit halfway yet? Have I, uh, have I survived halfway into this adventure before I die? No, no, you, this is not quite halfway. Nice. Um, let me see here. One third? Did he make it one third? I pop my head up and something chops okay. it off. All right. So, uh, so as you enter in the room, um, give me a give me a perception check. Twenty. All right. So as you enter the room, uh, as you crawl, you know, pull yourself up from the hole. You're probably up to you know, like you're on your knees now. Uh, when you notice that the air has grown colder and the cupboard doors start to move slightly with a creak all by themselves. Um, as you start to bring yourself up to your feet, uh, you notice that some knives and forks and pots and pans are slowly detaching themselves from their hanging hooks. Um, I will mention that down below. I'm uh, probably gonna, uh, as, soon as, as soon as I see this, I'm, oh shit. And I'm gonna try and jump back down the hole. All right, He's um, catch him, catch him. Uh, definitely is prepared to catch. <laughs> All right, um, give me a uh, something check. Uh, give me a <laughs> athletics. Yeah, I was gonna give me athletic an athletic or acrobatic would be my guess. Acrobatics, perhaps. Yeah, uh, well, they're both the athletics, same. Athletics, please. Can I please? Okay. No, they're not. Can I please athletics check this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jas Jasper, give me an athletics check. Yeah. My athletics and acrobatics are the same. Yeah. Your your <laughs> acrobatics and my athletics. <laughs> oh dear, that's not good. Five. Um. So you um you scramble towards the hole, and uh, just as you're most of the way through it, a uh, a knife goes whizzing through the air. Uh, towards you, and I need you to give me a dexterity saving throw. Well, fuck. <laughs> it's just a dexterity saving throw. Ha! 23. All right. Oh, oh. The knife goes whizzing by your head, but doesn't even uh, trim one of your precious few hairs. <laughs> Not, uh, the as you... Not the mutton chops. <laughs> as you slip through the hole, and uh, Badger, give me a, uh, an attacks <laughs> check. Catch me. All right. That is a fifteen. You you catch him without a problem. <laughs> what? I'm gonna I'm gonna like like tap pat pat one of your horns. And say, thank you. That was uh, eh, 
Shit's fucking moving up there. <laughs> I'm trying to decide how many points that got you, just so you know. <laughs> See, now I have a mental image of, of Badger, like, after somebody does something, just, like, reaching behind his back and pulling out, like, a 10.6. <laughs> like a 4.5. Sorry, sorry. Okay, keep going. All right, I get down. You can see the writings I, at any time in the document. I tell everybody what I saw and why I dove, and I was like, "So that's enough uh, climbing for me for the day." Agreed. Hmm. Ethereum, return, and the little white bat appears on his shoulder and crawls back underneath the hood. I, I'm, Wait, I'm what, curious. What's the bat's name? I'm so sorry. What's the bat's name? Ethereum? Ethereum. Spell it? E-P-H-I-R-U-M. Nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, out of curiosity, uh, could you send your bat back up so we can see if they are if those items are still active, or if it takes, of course, a humanoid to trigger. Reaches behind him, whispers, and the Ethereum flies back up. Mm -hmm. uh, the I roll white. <laughs> the kitchen is as you first saw it. Oh. Minus a uh, a, a knife that is uh, clattering on the floor. The one knife that was projected at him is uh, obviously displaced, but everything else seems to be returned. Right, um, really quick, um, Garrick, Raquel, where have you been waiting this whole time? Have you been in the ballroom? Or, I mean, the dining room? Ballroom, or uh, packed into the little kitchen? Um, dining room. Okay. I'm probably in, like, the doorway to the kitchen. Yeah. Alright, cool. Carry I'm on. trying to observe everything, so, you know... That's not a suspicious question at all. I Let know. Continue. Sorry, I just realized that I haven't like been paying attention to you guys. Or killed us, yeah. I mean that yeah. too. Nice cover. Nice cover. So uh <laughs> the upstairs is full of uh flying knives. Shall we go downstairs? Well that is just one room upstairs. But yeah, that is, that is very interesting, and uh, I, for one, will probably not make it up that hole anyway. So, let's find a different way to go. So, I'm sorry, just looking at the current uh, Badger standings, I have to say, Badger does actually turn to Raquel and say, I will give you a boost. <laughs> This is a, this is a direct reflection of how low your score is, Raquel, and not how high it is. As soon as Badger says that, all of a sudden the dining room bursts into flames. God! Oh, uh, there are like, like the the table, the chair, the walls are on fire. Like, do we do we feel do we feel the heat? We do not. Is it? Is there anything else? Like, are there any people or anything else in? It's just what is in there is on fire, or is there anything additional that wasn't in there before? It is. Uh, no, it's all. It, it's exactly the same as it was, except it is now on fire. And I need you to each give me a wisdom saving throw. Jesus. Oh, oh. You sure you don't want like dexterity saving? Yeah, or let's like do dexterity. Yeah, yeah, this one's cool. This one's cool. This one's not cool. Oh. 16. Okay. Shit. 9. Okay. 12. 14. 11. Okay. Um. Um. Uh. Zagwar is, is alright, but the rest of you are going to take. Uh, let's 14 see. wasn't high enough? No, no it wasn't. Um, so, uh, so bad, um, Badger, um, that was, uh, Garrick, you take, uh, four psychic damage. Uh, Raquel takes two psychic damage. 
Badger takes one psychic damage. And Jasper takes three. Um, I should have been tracking that on your characters as I said that. I'm still tracking mine. I, I I took... I'm updating in roll 20. Uh, so your okay. call cards that I key for you are accurate. So I know. <laughs> um, so that was. Alright, so uh, while Nate's doing that, uh, shall we hurry? <laughs> um. Uh. Uh, right now, how much damage did I do to you again? Two. Uh, and Jasper? Three. All right. So are you guys, you guys getting out of the room? Yes. All right. Back the way we came. Quickly. Roger. Zephram flies back to me and lands under the hood again. So uh, as soon as... Uh, oh, shit. I, I totally fucked something up here. Yeah. Uh, before, re- before it goes away, let me... This was supposed to happen. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Okay, there's the fire. Ah! ah. Super cool. Yeah. Ooh. That was supposed to show up, and it lights up the room. It was fancy, but I forgot to add it. Uh, I forgot to take it from the lair, because I could see it. <laughs> <laughs> I see just free fire. Light. So after we leave the room, is it still on fire? As soon as you leave the room... The fire disappears as uh, as quickly as it had uh, as it had come. Uh, there's no sign of fire damage to the room, and you ha- you show no signs of physical damage on your person. Hmm. But my brain has been damaged, <laughs> and it's small enough to begin with. Um. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry. Go go ahead. I was just gonna say, so uh, stairs downward, or and then he points to that door on the uh, northwest corner. Or... In request for troops, leave no door unopened. To the door we go. Out of character, I wish to say, if we're even remotely trying to end this today, we should uh, probably not go through every door given to us. <laughs> but in character, let's do it. <laughs> I don't oh, care. Yeah. I'll- I'll stay up late as you guys can uh, feel like. Hey, Challenge we're playing accepted. on a night where I don't have drill tomorrow, so fuck it. Uh, so who's lead? Badger? Badger is happy to lead. All right. So uh, this uh, there is no doorway here. It was just open, although it seems like there once was something that blocked this path. Uh, peering into the room, you see only inky blackness. Um, which somebody with dark vision can see. Um, and uh, it's just a uh, three stone walls um, in this small uh, small room with no light. All right. I, on, okay. Out of, out of character on the map, it looks like there's a door across. Mm-hmm. Is that like, do I see a door or do I see a wall? You could, you, you see a wall. But you could, you know, like, without just kind of like passively looking at it, you see a wall. But you could percept or investigate and see if that is in fact what you see. All right, um, I will like put my hand out, hold, and to Badger, like, hold on just a second. And without going into the room, I'll look into it to see what we see what I can tell. That's eh, only a sixteen. Somebody gonna perhaps help our. Uh doddering old man. Sure. Oh my. I have a plus six to my perception check. Leave me alone. Oh, you, you should totally do the roll yourself, because, yeah. Well, that's an oh. 11, so that's a 17. Yeah. Uh, you, you get a... Um, so, taking a look around the room, the you notice a few similarities between the far end of this hallway and the doorway that you now stand in. Um, There are, you can see little stuff marks by uh, next to your side of the door. And just the stone, like you're not 
close enough and it's not well lit enough so you can see similar scuff marks on the other end but other features of that end of the hallway seem to match your side so with my experience i would probably be able to tell that it had you been would... moved okay mm. so uh i think that's a door on that end Roger, would you like to try a door? So, at this point, I have to ask, like, it, it still doesn't look like a door to me, right? So, do I, like, heft my great axe, or does it appear to be a door to me? It looks like a wall to you. Uh, mm. and I lift my great axe and prepare to attack, although I'm giving a brief moment for someone to stop me. Well, just, uh, just walk up to it and see if you can uh, pull it open. I've already walked up to it, aren't I? I believe it's push. Oh no, you're right, so walk up to that one. Oh, okay, right. yeah, you, you hadn't said you actually went into the room yet. You're updating the scores, huh? I am, absolutely. <laughs> Alright, as we were. So I walk up to the door now. These are getting more and more in depth, too. What, what are you going to try to do with this door? Or this Dude, door? Does it appear to be a door now, or does it appear to be a wall still? Are you going to percept at it? or are I you am going definitely to... going to look at it before I attempt to whack it, yes. <laughs> I smack the wall and see what happens. I mean, oh, dear. I can't we have say an 11. I... We have an 11. 11, it... I mean, like, maybe it looks kind of weird... For a wall, but it just looks like a wall. It's not the first wall I've bashed. <laughs> I attacked the wall. I, I motioned the, to Zaguar to, to move into the space that um, Badger left, so then I can take his space so my crossbow can illuminate the room. Okay. That's that is that is wisely done. Um, okay, give. You, uh, give me a strength check. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I'm, I'm gonna wait and see what happens with the uh, attacking the wall before I go in and do anything. Yeah, give, give me a. I just want to know: is she pushing or pulling? I, I no. She's swinging her axe. Points. I'm just gonna do Sorry, it again. Gil. You're losing another point right now. Sorry. I see it's um, not a character. Whatever. Take all the points. Take all the points. Yeah. Give, give me a. Give me an athletics check. Athletics <laughs> check. All right, let's do it. That is a twenty-three. I mean, your <laughs> your axe like rings out across the stone. Uh, it's fortunate that nobody else was in there with you because the sound just rings and reverberates <laughs> off the walls. Um, but it doesn't break. All right, after the initial like it rings off the walls, Jasper will follow Badger in and say, hold on just a second. And I'll actually start <laughs> touching the wall and trying to figure out if there's a way to open it. The wall moans. <laughs> it doesn't actually moan. <laughs> no, um, right, yes, oh, right, there, right there. Um, no, give, give, me a, give me an investigation check. Oh, oh that's on the floor. Oh, that's a 24. All right. Um, so you can tell that there's definitely a secret door here. There is some mechanism to open this to give you passage, but it doesn't look like the mechanism is in this room. All right. I do pass that along to everybody. It I'll looks be right like... back. Oh, I'm what sorry. You said you were gonna. I thought you already relayed that. Yeah, so I will. I will that. relay it. I was gonna add there on top go. of it, but nothing important. Okay. And then Zegwar. Um, Zygwar says, I'll be right back, and goes to the other room and high-fives the griffin. All right. <laughs>